All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, propagation, uh, specifically ground wave propagation. But in order to get there, what I did is put together this diagram that kind of shows the bigger picture of propagation. So let's take a few minutes to talk through this and uh, we'll end up with ground wave propagation. So what we have up here in the top corner is the happy sun. And this sun is just spewing stuff at us all day long. It spews particles or radiation, radiated particles. And uh, as this stuff comes towards the Earth, we do have a layer of protection. It's the ionosphere, and that's depicted here with this gray arch. Now, the ionosphere is a thin or less dense layer of our atmosphere where these radiated particles collect um, and they become ionized. And what they do is, is that they allow us, when we're projecting RF energy up towards the sky in the form of radio communications, it can reflect down depending upon the conditions of the ionosphere and, um, and the frequencies of the, of the transmission that we're sending. Now, I have a video that talks a little bit about how to read ionosphere conditions and solar conditions, so I'm not going to cover that here. I'll have it linked below so you can check it out. But what I want to talk about for a second is sky wave propagation, and that is when we use our radios and antennas and a signal goes up, and then you can see that depicted here going up. Now, the angle of this uh, RF is called your incident angle, and it reflects back down at a similar angle. So here we have ape one and we have ape two. And then you can see that by transmitting up, we hit that and the signal comes back down. Now you can vary this angle. Um, at a lower angle, you go further. So it's good for DX. A lot of people say that that's why they use vertical antennas. They have better low, low takeoff angle. Um, or you can make the angle very, very steep. And at its steepest, we call that near vertical incident sky wave. And that's pretty much when you go up and you come right back down. The incident angle plays a very important part in propagation because it determines your skip distance. So if you imagine a triangle and you look down at the bottom of this, the bottom of the triangle is what we would call our skip distance. And that is the distance between ape one and ape two. And that means that at this angle, at this time of day, at this particular frequency, we can expect reliable results from one to two. Pretty, pretty easy stuff, right? Well, also when we project uh, RF out into our environment, into our atmosphere, uh, we have something called ground wave, and that is when uh, radiation travels along the surface of the earth, and then eventually through attenuation dies out. But that ground wave can go a certain distance, in some cases hundreds of miles, and can be quite useful for certain types of radioactivity. Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about is, is that vertically polarized antennas do better with ground wave propagation. And so if you think about uh, AM frequencies, like in the old days when you used to listen to the golden oldies and, uh, and Freedom Rock or in the AM channels, you would use ground wave propagation to get to you. So when you think about most AM radio stations, if not all of them are vertically polarized and they travel along the ground. And that is how you can you can um, you can hear them now at night when certain conditions apply you may get some skip but they generally rely upon ground wave propagation to work. So in this skip zone, you really don't have any uh, way to hear ape one or or respond to them, and so that is kind of a dead zone that's right there. Let's take a look here in more detail and talk about ground wave propagation. So when we actually say ground wave, we're talking about three different things. Uh, there's different subsets to ground wave propagation because it kind of encompasses everything that's not considered sky wave propagation. So the first one we have is called director space wave. And you might have heard this referred to as line of sight. And this is when people talk about UHF and VHF, like your two meter, your 440, six meter, and even some components of 10. And they're like, height is might, height is might. Uh, the reason that is the case, if you think about your repeater, is, is that you have an antenna that's way up in the air. So if you're in a geographic um, the proximity to that, your signal can just go straight up. It can hit that antenna and then it can do its business. The other thing is, is that we have something called ground reflected. And uh, again, this is a more of a UHF and VHF thing. That is uh, a signal can come down off of an antenna, hit the ground and then bounce back up. Signals can also bounce around uh, terrain or infrastructure like buildings and hills and things on trees, things along those lines. And that's considered ground reflected. Now, something can happen here that uh, maybe we want to talk a little bit about in terms of ground reflection. It takes more time for a signal to leave a radio, hit the ground, bounce up, and then hit the receiving antenna than it does to go in a straight line. 
So in the event that both scenarios are possible, which happens all the time, those signals start to compete uh, at the receiving station and will actually degrade your signal, not improve it. Now, if they arrive at the same time, that will improve your signal, but that's more unlikely than likely. And then the other thing we're going to talk about real quick is the surface wave. And uh, this is more prominent in lower frequencies, but can go all the way up to 30 megahertz or the 10 meter band. And this is when uh, a frequency leaves an antenna and kind of hugs the ground and moves along. And what happens is, is that part of that signal gets slowed down or drug across the ground. So it kind of falls forward, kind of leans forward. And that's what holds it to the surface of the earth. So when we talk about surface wave propagation, that component of ground wave propagation, what we wanted to understand is that it attenuates over distance. Now, the, now you can get a couple of hundred miles of good contacts on ground wave propagation. So it's something that you might want to think about putting into your toolbox or your toolkit when you're playing around with your ham shack or your antenna installation. It might be something you want to try for local channels, semi-local channels, or even regional channels in your state or adjoining state. Now, some of the things that can cause some of the attenuation obviously are atmosphere and weather. So depending upon where you live, the type of weather that you get, um, they can cause some of the attenuation, which would cause these signals to degrade over distance. Terrain is another one. If you have big hills and valleys, uh, that could also become a problem, as well as cities and big buildings. Now, depending upon the type of ground that we are traveling over, you can get more resistive ground loss. And so if, if the ground is more conductive, it will flow better. It's like that would be like seawater or marshy or very rich soils. But if you have something like sand and desert and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get more loss. And the other thing is, is that your loss increases with frequency. So what I'm saying is, is that ground wave propagation is going to work better for you at 80 meters than it is at 10 meters or 12 meters, if that makes sense. Anyhow, I think that's going to sum it up. Hopefully everybody got something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendation, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks, everybody.